Hi, this is Pam from Revival's Fiber Arts and Gatherings in Greentown, Indiana. I'm working in conjunction with the Greentown Library to bring you this virtual class. Now the kits are available at the library and they will include, it'll, it'll come up as a, a roll of different things. Now inside it you're going to find a color sheet just because I think that everybody should get a chance to color, it's fun. And this is your pattern and what you're going to do, it has the instructions for the project. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut this whole thing out, pin it to your shamrock fabric and then cut your shamrock fabric out with in this pattern. Now you'll notice it's kind of wonky folksy looking. If you don't like that then go ahead and just draw your own out. It's not that it's not very difficult and I promise you no matter what it's all going to look really cool when you're done. Now I'm going to put this away and I'm going to show you this is your pattern after you've cut it out. And like I said it's kind of wonky and and I just kind of liked it because then you can position it any way you want on your backing material. Now your material for your shamrock is this green that's included. I cut enough of it so that if you do your shamrock up high then you'll have some down low so if you want to do smaller shamrocks or you want to make like little um, leprechaun hats you can do that without any problem whatsoever. You won't have enough to do a whole lot but you can do a few and this is your backing fabric right here it's that plaid. Now both of these are repurposed wool they used to be skirts and I found them at a um, yard sale actually and I have washed them so that they would be and dried them so they would felt and by felting it means that the fibers will go into each other a little bit more and they're um, and they fluff up a little bit more so it's it, it's kind of an it's a different texture than if you'd actually bought it off the rack. Um, you'll also see that each of those um, kits that I've put over at the library are wrapped in three strands of different colored floss and I put those in there for you to use to um, if you with a needle to sew your backing and your shamrock together and to do some little embellishments and things like that I didn't include a lot of I didn't include anything else besides that this go round because I, I really want you to try and decorate with things that you have at home and I have this is called wool roving and actually it's just it's super soft it's like um, the, the funny looking yarns that you can get over at Hobby Lobby or um, Walmart Goodwill has a lot that people decide they don't want so I have picked up some of that, that stuff from there um, and but these here these that I showed you are specialty yarns you can use anything you want on this now I finished mine as close to finished as I'm gonna get for right now and what I did was I took the floss that I had and I wrote my lucky charm on here I used some of this wool roving and I couched it down and couching I'm gonna bring this up close for you to see there are you see the silk this gold color that I used here in the words I used that to loop over the top of the of this roving so that I could bring it and, and keep it on the, the shamrock and that's called couching and I did that all the way around so that this will stay where I wanted it to. Now I decide, I found this little pen. My husband and I were stationed in Baltimore, Maryland and we were able to go down to the dock area and they had this little pin at the Hard Rock Cafe that year. So I've had it forever. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I kept it and I'm using it on here. So you're really not limited. Then I put the beads that I have. I have, I have a lot of beads that I just kind of fritter around with and I add to things. I don't really do a lot of jewelry making, but they do make really great embellishments. And as you can see, this is mine. And I think it's still a work in progress because there's still things that I want to do to it and add to it. And it'll probably be overdone by other people's standards. But 
it's mine and it's it reflects me and I want you guys to use what you have at home sew it on glue glue it on um, if you're gonna glue on to the wool and you have a hot gun hot glue gun that would help too it's a little bit easier than the um, glue stick glue sticks great for putting your fabrics as a oh what's it called as a, as a fixative basically just as a temporary fix on wool this plaid that I gave you if you take your glue stick and you rub it on there and then adhere your shamrock to it it'll be easier to deal with that way I tried doing it put, using the glue stick on the shamrock fabric itself and it didn't really work so well for me um, but that's a, a good way to take care of that. The, the problem with glue when you're doing applique, whether it's quilting applique on cotton or whether it's doing the wool, it, it really makes it difficult to pull your needle through. And um, then it just kind of decreases the fun, I think, if you have to fight with your fabric. Uh, the glue stick is a temporary just to get you where you can get started. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, to call me. I put my business card with all of your kits and I am more than happy to answer any questions or help you with your project. And um, I look forward to seeing you all next time. I am looking at doing some classes in May and uh, I'm talking to the library, I'm talking with Kim at the library about that now. So anyway, the videos are hopefully getting better. I am learning. So y'all take care and I look forward to seeing y'all someday at the shop. Thanks. Bye.